Hello and welcome to a trip planned for the Lower Angel Creek Cabin, doing this as a winter trip. This trip plan is intended to give you some resources, um, including some of the logistics for this cabin, how to rent it, how to get there, uh, what to bring, what to do when you do arrive there. Um, it, we'll all, there'll also be a brief discussion of some of the risks associated with a trip like this, as well as providing you with a few alternate locations if this particular cabin is rented because it's quite popular. The Lower Angel Creek Cabin is a beautiful cabin that was recently uh, rebuilt um, in the Angel Creek Valley, which is, is a great place to go and recreate during the winter months. Um, this trip uh, provides a pretty accessible location with a, a dramatic wilderness feel here in the interior of Alaska. This cabin is located in the Chena State Recreation Area and needs to be reserved uh, for the particular night or nights that you want to use it. It can be reserved up to six months ahead and is quite popular. So getting a weekend over Thanksgiving or Christmas break or spring break can be difficult. So think ahead and plan ahead if you're thinking about using this particular cabin. You go on to Reserve America, which is the site that the State Parks uses to reserve this cabin. You can check availability and prices. The cabin costs $55 per night plus an $8 reservation fee, and you can be reserved for up to five nights. Um, and at the end of this presentation, I'll offer a few choices if you happen to not be able to get this particular cabin. There are lots of ways to get out to the Angel Creek Cabin. It's a trail that goes up the valley and the Center Valley Trail is definitely a winter trail. It's very swampy in the summer. So all of our winter transportation is available. Cross country skis, uh, snowshoes, uh, people fat bike this, dog sled, a snow machine, or a combination of both. Sometimes it's nice for a family if uh, one snow machine hauling the gear in and then the rest of the folks uh, can ski in with a little bit lighter loads. The Lower Angel Creek Cabin is located, as I said, in the Chena State Recreation Area. Um, the trailhead is at mile 50.5 on Chena Hot Springs Road. It's on the left-hand side of the road driving out and a nice well-maintained parking lot with an outhouse there. Uh, the trail uh, heads out of the parking lot and uh, goes across flats a little up a, a small steep little hill and crosses the winter trail or the quest trail and and uh, continues up the center of the Angel Creek Valley. Uh, the trail doesn't have a ton of elevation gain. It's fairly uh, uh, smooth going um, the, and, and you travel for 3.1 miles uh, into the Lower Angel Creek cabin. Uh, the cabin uh, is located on the left-hand side, downhill from the trail, uh, heading out. And uh, the cabin is uh, 20 by 24. Like I said, it's fairly well, uh, fairly newly built. It's two rooms and can accommodate a lot of guests, up to nine people. Kind of a lot to stuff in there, but, um, but is totally functional for, for that many folks. Out of the cabin, there's a saw and an ax and a broom. But you're, you're, uh, you should bring your own um, camp stoves, light systems. I really like to bring a lantern out. Um, I sometimes will bring an extra uh, backup saw. Um, and it's recommended that you bring your own firewood. There's sometimes firewood provided from people who've been out there. Um, and you can find some dead wood, although it's fairly picked clean in that area. Uh, so it's best if you bring your own wood uh, to, to out to the cabin. You can see here one of the wooden bunks that are provided. Uh, it's also a good, great idea to bring a good winter sleeping bag for when the cabin cools down after your stove goes out at night and a sleeping pad on, on those wooden platforms. They're pretty hard to sleep on unless you've got a pad underneath you. This is a topo map of the area surrounding the Angel Creek Valley. It, uh, the Chena Dome Trail basically goes along the top of the ridge line all the way around this valley. Uh, down in the center of the valley is a beautiful wooded valley there. Uh, the trail continues past the cabin to the Upper Angel Creek Cabin, which is another 2.8 miles. 
and provides a nice uh, additional place to go if you're not done with your ski or your fat bike when you do get to the cabin initially. Having a distance of 3.1 miles is pretty ideal for people uh, self-transporting skiing, especially if you've got some younger skiers or some newer skiers, it's very uh, accessible. But at the same time, you're far enough out up this valley that it really does have a feel that you're uh, deep in the wilderness there in that Angel Creek Valley. So you can see on this state parks map, you can see the Chino Dome Trail, which uh, goes uh, circumvent navigates the, the valley that, that you're in, in the Angel Creek Valley. And you see the blue trail heading right up the middle to the first cabin, which is the lower Angel Creek, second cabin, the upper Angel Creek. You also see the hillside trail there which can provide a little bit more distance, um, is generally used in the summer when the swampy ground is, is not uh, suitable for walking or ATVs, uh, and, uh, and the winter trail is the blue one in the middle. Overall, a trip to a wilderness cabin like this is similar to many other wilderness trips that you might do, but there's a few extras that you can bring along, which makes a cabin trip a little more fun sometimes. Sometimes I'll carry a polk sled if I'm self-transporting with skis or snowshoes, which allows me to bring in some of the firewood, bring in some just a little bit of extra stuff, like maybe some better quality food. Cabins are a great place to uh, uh, explore your culinary side, to try some different recipes and things like that. Cooking over the wood stove, uh, it, it's a great opportunity for that. Uh, cabin booties are great. You usually don't want to clomp around in your big snow boots or your big ski boots inside the cabin. So it's great to have some down booties, some cabin booties to kick around in when you get there. A lantern and candles are great for that ambiance, that light, that background. You've got quite a bit of time at the cabin. It's only 3.1 miles in, so you're going to have some time to relax and enjoy the solitude, be out of cell phone range, some games, some books, some journals maybe even a musical instrument if you have room in your gear. I won't go over this whole group gear list, but some, some highlights, some things to remember is that uh, uh, pots and pans and, and utensils and things like that are not supplied, so you'll need to bring those. Uh, your camp stove. You can cook over the wood stove, but sometimes it's nice to have something to heat water up a little faster, um, whether that's a Coleman two burner whether that's a jet boil or something in that uh, vein, uh, it's nice to have some additional uh, cooking tools while you're out there. Group first aid kit is, is a great thing to have in case of any kind of accidents. A communication device uh, in inReach, a satellite phone, something like that, that there is no cell coverage out there. So if you did need to communicate and get in touch, that would be necessary for that. You're gonna wanna make sure to bring your own toilet paper out there. And then some of the extras that I've talked about uh, as far as, as some fun things to do while you're enjoying your time at the cabin. As far as personal gear goes, uh, it's a fairly standard winter list for a trip like this. Some of the things to consider are some of the extras uh, for the potential of some extremely cold weather in the bottom of the valley in winter in Alaska. You can get some really low temperatures. You can get some wind out there that, that adds to that cold storms, uh, things like that. So you're going to need some wind protection, some extra insulation, some puffy coats, uh, mittens, things like that, that will really help you uh, thrive out there. Most people don't bring like a negative 40 or 50 sleeping bag. You do have the cabin, you do have the wood stove. I find that at the beginning of the night, I'm really warm, I have to be out of my sleeping bag. And then as the night comes, it cools down, I get back, get climb in. Um, so usually most people are between zero and 20 below seems to make a lot of sense for a, a sleeping bag choice for out there. If you go warmer than that and you bring a 40 above bag, you'll be fine for a while, but you may have to get up a couple times and stoke the fire in the middle of the night. There's tons of fun stuff to do at the cabin. Um, it's really nice to get away from the city, the technology, the lights, all that. Um, it's great also to have a warm, comfortable social experience in the cabin. One of the things that I enjoy doing sometimes is taking my sleeping pad and sleeping bag and, and sleeping out under the stars, just finding a nice little flat spot, listening to the night noises, popping my head out to catch the aurora when it's out in the middle of the night. Uh, really is, is a fun uh, thing to check out if you're, if you're into it. 
bringing the stuff I've already talked about, journals, games, artwork, uh, music, um, stories to read aloud are a great thing to do. Go for a walk in the dark. Um, you know, in the winter in Alaska, it's going to be dark for a fair amount of the time. So finding a nice time to, to go enjoy the, the night air and getting out of the cabin, ex exploring further up the valley, either up th towards the Upper Angel Creek Valley or heading up maybe onto the hillside trail and checking that out, um, singing songs, taking photos of the aurora, taking photos of the stars, really kind of enjoying where you're at and, and embracing that. As with any adventure in Alaska, there are some risks associated with being out there. Some of the ones to, to really consider with this particular trip are going to be that the Alaska winters can be cold and brutal. So that may be cold weather, that might be wind, being prepared for yourself, being prepared so that when you get to the cabin, you have enough energy and enough uh, uh, wherewithal to be able to get the, cap the fire going in the cabin and use that resource when you do get there. Um, is, is an important thing. Making sure that you have a reliable navigation system, whether that's your phone GPS with a charged battery, maybe downloaded maps, um, maybe hard maps as well, uh, uh, analog map and compass, um, things like that to make sure that you're going the right direction. And, and check the forecast. The weather can change uh, fairly dramatically. And so, you know, you might wake up and the temperatures drop to 30 below. And this is a concern for you, but it's also a concern for things like your vehicle left in the parking lot. A vehicle left overnight at negative 30, you might have trouble getting it going, and that could cause a problem uh, uh, when you get back to your car. So also during the winter months, you know, in, in Alaska here, we one of our wildlife hazards is going to be moose. And so this valley certainly contains moose, so it's something we're going to want to be aware of give them space, make sure that we're not uh, encroaching upon their space as they try to survive the long, cold uh, winter. And accidents are, are more serious at a remote location. So you're dealing with things like fire, whether that's the wood stove, your lantern, your Coleman stove, whatever that might be. You're dealing with saws, you're dealing with axes. Um, all that kind of stuff can can has the potential for accidents. So being a little extra careful out there is a great thing because a, a little accident out there can be more serious than it might be if that same thing happened in town. And in addition to that, again, having some sort of communication device is, is a great uh, way and, and a good first aid kit, maybe a little working knowledge of, of some first aid. So the Angel Creek Cabin, the Lower Angel Creek Cabin is a terrific resource and it gets used regularly. There's lots of people using it. And like I said, sometimes you might not, if you're not thinking way ahead, be able to get the cabin that you want. In the Chena State Rec Area, there's, there's some other awesome cabins. Uh, the Compo Cabin is a relatively new cabin and it's two miles off the road, located a little bit before the Angel Creek Valley on the Chena Hot Springs Road. And, um, if you're up for a little bit more, you can head a little further up the valley to the Upper Angel Creek Cabin, which is not rented as frequently as the Lower Angel Creek Cabin. It's a little bit smaller, but is, is a nice location as well. You've also got uh, the Stiles Creek Cabin and the Colorado Creek Cabin, which are definitely a little further and a little more intense to get to, um, especially if you're self-transporting your newer skier, maybe you have kiddos, uh, but, but are both good choices. Um, in addition, you can travel to another state recreation site, which is down in Fielding Lake in the eastern Alaska range, and travel in the winter 1.5 miles off the road to get to the Fielding Lake cabin. Again, the weather can be pretty intense down there, but it's a beautiful uh, mountain location on a lake. Also, the BLM White Cabin uh, uh, out in the White Mountains Recreation Area. Um, there, are, there are several cabins listed here. The closest is Lee's Cabin, so it's obviously going to be the most popular usually, uh, located seven miles in off the Wickersham Dome trailhead. And you've also got several others out there, Ellisars, Moose Creek, and Colorado Creek Cabin, um, all located in that area. And you can even combine cabins into a, a, a trip once you uh, get to that point and you want to be out for a few nights. Uh, an, another resource we have is the Interior Fish and Wildlife Cabins. Um, coal Mine uh, Number 5 Cabin is located two miles off the road off the Richardson Highway down by Donnelly Dome. 
And then uh, to, uh, the Alaska Highway outside Delta Junction has a couple cabins, the Donald Lake Cabin and the Little Donald Lake Cabin. All of these are available public use, uh, reservable cabins. And so hopefully it's, if you're interested, you can find one of these to allow yourself to get out and enjoy. So I've got a couple links here. I've got a link with the description for the Lower Angel Creek Cabin for, at the Alaska State Parks website. I also have a, a link here to a Google Drive that has this slideshow on it that I'm showing you. It's got the gear list for the group gear and the personal gear, and also has the maps uh, that were in this presentation. You can download those and print those to help you get out there. Um, it's a great idea if you're going to one of these cabins uh, to think about using your phone. Uh, it seems to be a very common navigation tool. Obviously, we have to worry about batteries a little bit, but um, using a Gaia GPS app and downloading the maps and the location for the cabin ahead of time onto your phone, and you could use that to help you navigate if there are any question marks. Uh, overall, it's pretty straightforward, the Lower Angel Creek cabin as far as navigation goes, but in the storm or if the trail hasn't been used super recently, sometimes it could be a little trickier to find. If you end up having any questions or uh, about this presentation, feel free to contact me or, or any of us at Outdoor Adventures here at UAF, and we'd be glad to answer your questions. Thanks, and uh, enjoy your trip.